This little point and shoot here is the Rico GR3X, a actually pocketable point and shoot camera that honestly I've been looking at for years and finally have had the opportunity to check out. So today I'm gonna give you sort of my first impressions after using it for a few days, about a week, and pretty much bringing it anywhere with me. And my knowledge is specifically going to be comparing it mostly to other film point and shoots I have, as well as the X100 series of cameras, as those have been my primary kind of daily carry camera. I know that a lot of street photographers and other kind of serious photographers really, really love this series. So after all of the time of me not having used one of these, here are the reasons I think that people actually do really enjoy this thing. Now, a big thanks to Rico for sending this out for the sake of this review. I don't get to keep it, they're not paying me, anything like that. I just reached out to them because almost any time I make any post about the Leica Q3 or the X100V or anything, people always say, well, what about the Rico GR3? What about the Rico GR3X? So I reached out to Rico, asked if they would loan me the camera for a few days and I have it for the next month or so. So take this as my first impressions after only using it for a little bit, but also comparing it directly to the cameras that I'm used to. So one of the things that I feel like is hard to convey with this camera and I didn't really realize how small it really was, but when actually comparing it to the X100 series, they look fairly similar when you just put them side by side like this. But even on this front angle, you can see that the depth is pretty significant. In fact, the depth of the X100 camera is almost the same depth as the full Ricoh GR3 with the lens. And so if you kind of put them side by side, back to back, you can see that while the X100 series is really, really small, the Ricoh GR3 series is legitimately much more pocketable. And I know that we're getting down to really, really small amounts here, and it doesn't seem like that would be a big deal. But honestly, once you start getting into the nitty gritty of this, the X100V and the X100F, uh, which I have here, these cameras are amazing and they make for great everyday cameras. They make great travel cameras. I mean, obviously I've talked ad nauseum about these cameras on this channel. But the thing about these is yes, when it's winter, I can fit this in the jacket pocket of this actual jacket right here but it takes up pretty much the entire pocket where the Rico GR3 X here and the obviously the GR3, I'm pretty much just gonna call this the GR3. It's the GR3 X, but once we get down to images, we'll talk about that. The GR3 fits in this pocket, but I can also, I also have, I don't even know what I have in here, a Bluetooth uh, headphones. I can put my phone in there, I can put my wallet. I can put a lot of other things into a pocket like this. And I can also fit these into a pants pocket, which is definitely not something I wanna be doing with the X100 series, despite the size seems like like, especially if you put them side by side like this and you're only seeing the top down depth, it doesn't seem like that big of a difference, but really in practice, it legitimately feels like a, a massive difference. It feels like an actual point and shoot camera versus a small dedicated camera. They, they just, they feel almost like they are different use cases for me. And I pretty much treat them as different use cases in how I started to use the different cameras. So the thing about the Ricoh here is that the way that I use this was much, much more as an actual like point and shoot, snap, take the camera out, look at it really quick, take the photo. I ran it on aperture priority mode the entire time, put it on auto ISO, just ran this thing as if it was a film point and shoot camera. And while I legitimately love the X100 series, obviously, like, I mean, you can see the X100V here is like all decked out with like, a filter, a lens hood, uh, a flash, a grip. It is more of like a photographic tool for me. Like I take it out, I'm thinking about the shutter speed. I'm looking through the EVF to make sure that things aren't over or underexposed. I feel like with this, I could even just turn the screen off and start guesstimating where the uh, focal length is as someone that just uses cameras in this focal length range all the time. I could probably start doing this without even using something like the back panel to find out framing. And I honestly would be someone that would actually like to use the expensive little optical viewfinders here on a camera like this because it would give me so much more of that point and shoot kind of feel. In fact, I'm gonna grab a point and shoot and we'll actually look at kind of comparing the two. So obviously not a full fair comparison because this camera here is the Fujifilm Class W, but it, it'll give us kind of an idea of where all of these sit. 
So I believe that the Rico GR3 or the, the the film GR series was a little bit smaller and you know it kind of bulged out here to accept the film where the class W is kind of like bridging the gap between the two things here. But even with that, like the class W is so, so small and it has the tiniest little viewfinder. Like you're not gonna be using this as a huge tool, but I do really like even that tiny viewfinder being able to use it and I definitely treat these two cameras very similarly where I don't know what the deal is with the X100 and maybe it's just because there are so many buttons and so many options, but I often will treat this camera more like I would treat even like a Sony camera or something. Recently, I've been trying to do more of like just a straight point and shoot style with this whole setup and just doing everything uh, at ISO 200 with the flash. And the only thing here I'm doing is making an adjustment on the exposure compensation. And I'm not using the EVF, I'm only using the OVF here on the X100V to try to kind of replicate that film experience. Maybe the, the good comp would be, I feel like I'm using like a Contax G2 versus using like a Contax T2 or T3, which is much more what this camera feels like. So to be honest, when I first got this camera, I was a little bit uh, bummed because I, I specifically really wanted to try out the GR3 because I really love the 28 millimeter focal length. And I feel like 40 millimeters at f2.8, like it's just kind of like a boring focal length to me. But then as I started shooting with it, uh, it really reminded me of the 38 millimeter on my Contax T2. I started getting into it and uh, it is a good focal length. It's definitely different than a 28, but for like a point and shoot, I think 50 would be too tight for sure. And 40 isn't that much removed from a 35. So I kind of just put my 35 millimeter hat on uh, mentally and kind of worked with it as if it was a 35. And obviously it's gonna be pretty close. While I am definitely kind of like an autofocus snob, I talk about autofocus and its reliability a lot on this channel. I think going into it, I expected this to be really terrible. I expected this to be like worse than the X100F. I expected it to be just like generations behind because this, I mean, it's an older kind of sensor and these cameras are definitely due for a refresh here soon. But I think because my expectations were so low, I was pleasantly surprised with how good it did. Was it perfect? No. Was I going to use it to track focus? No, but I also wasn't expecting that out of this and I was treating it much more like a film point and shoot. And because I had that kind of like expectation, I was going into it, trying to experience the camera in that same way. It felt like it made a lot more sense and I wasn't trying to use continuous focus and uh, grab focus and then wait for the moment to happen. I was more just like bringing the camera up, trying to maybe get my composition, take a photo, that was it. So there's something to be said about, I guess your expectations and knowing the use case of a camera. And then that will definitely enhance your feeling of how well this thing actually works in practice. Now, obviously the great thing about a camera like this is it's tiny, obviously, but it packs the same size sensor. It's a full APS-C sensor. So it has the same size of a sensor as these X100 cameras. And in a really, really small package form factor like that, you're going to get pretty darn good image quality for what it is. And now working in the idea that I really wanted just like a point and shoot style, like snappy, just like snapshots style camera, I made a just film emulation preset where it just gives the file automatic uh, auto white balance, auto exposure, everything like that, and just gives a full look to the, the files. And while they're not amazing, right? Like I probably would do more to it. I think that has been a good way to go about getting something that I can just toss in here and get results that I really like, because I do really like the results out of this. And none of these were edited outside of just like hitting sync on that preset. So all of it's just auto white balance, auto exposure. It's the closest I've gotten to using something like this and just dropping it off at a drugstore using like some cheap drugstore film and getting back scans that like aren't incredible. But I think that that's kind of what I love about this camera and it adds to the whole like mystique of the whole thing. Now, obviously this is going to be the smallest package you can make. It's kind of like 
the smallest version of the X100. But I did just get this from Square Hood. I reached out when I found out I was getting this camera because I'd seen that they were coming out with this new hood variation with glass here. And one of the things I've heard a lot about the Ricoh GRs is, is that it's really easy to get dust into the lens and the sensor and everything. And obviously as a fixed lens camera, nothing you can do about that. So it's uh, a cool little way to protect your camera and lens. The only problem obviously is this definitely brings the size up quite a bit to where you're not really gaining that advantage. But if you're someone that's going out to deliberately shoot photos, this is definitely something I would toss on there for sure. Pretty cool thing. So I'll toss a link to this in the description down below. Uh, they weren't even fully ready at the moment that I reached out. So the owner of Square Hood actually just sent me his personal one. So uh, shout out to them. But what I like about this is I'm sure they make grips and things like that, but obviously tossing a hood on here and getting something like this is still gonna be so much more minimal than trying to deck out an X100. And so while the GR3 series and the X100 series often get conflated as very similar cameras, I feel like they are actually pretty different in a lot of ways. And the main thing is just the way that the smaller form factor and the lack of probably an EVF brings me to work with this and probably bring it more places. The first thing that happened when I got this camera, it came right before dinner. So I'm, I take it out. I'm taking photos of my kids and stuff. And my wife obviously sees that there's another camera. I'm sure she's rolling her eyes thinking I bought another camera, but I just said, Hey, Maddie. And before I can even ask the question, she looks over and says, yeah, you know what? That's a camera I would actually use. And so while my wife has taken a bunch of photos with the X100 series over the years when we're on vacations or whatever, usually she doesn't bring a camera places. Every photo of me that exists is on an iPhone. And so one of the things that obviously just changes the perception about something like this and the reason reason I think this series is so special outside of the fact that it's actually a good camera is that it's so small and small enough that I think that someone like my wife who isn't going to bring one of these cameras around even though they're really small this is something she would actually throw in a bag and pull out to take photos of our kids and hopefully me interacting with our kids as well on trips and things like that so there is a really good case for me to be able to pick up a camera like this and use it as more of like a daily snapshots camera that's still gonna give me good quality. It's still gonna give me the intentionality if I want it, but even just the auto settings with a great lens, a great sensor kind of does that for me. So I definitely have a full video coming out on this at some point in maybe the next month or so. So if you're interested in hearing my full thoughts or you have questions that you want me to answer on this, leave them in the comments down below. I'll definitely try to either get to them in the comments or respond to them specifically in the future video. If you want to uh, see any of the stuff I talked about today, you can find the links to the hoods and whatnot. I'll also link all of the different little accessories I have for the X100 series and whatnot in the description down below as well. And if you liked these particular presets, let me know because I'm considering making a smaller batch of more inexpensive film emulation style presets that are at a, again, much lower price point than uh, my regular ones that are more suited for weddings and higher end stuff for sure. So thanks again. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all on the next one.